Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is August 22nd, 2020. Before we start, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security, and I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. Also, if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I am on Twitter at AlphaCharts365, so you could go ahead and give me a follow over there too. All right, so let's start with the SPX. Um, closed at all time highs on Friday. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so, you know, there's nothing bearish about closing at all time highs. All the moving averages are set up in a nice range. Um, doesn't mean that we're gonna continue going higher here, but again, that is a bullish uh, scenario. So we're looking really good there. But here is the counter argument. The equal weight SPX has not closed at all time highs and actually is starting to roll over. So there is a divergence going on right here from SPX cap weighted to RSP, which is equal weighted. So when we look at SPX versus RSP, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do RSP versus SPX. That's fine. All right, so this is the chart I wanted to show you. So you, as you can see, we, this was an area of um, support on, the, on a relative basis. And I think this is the area that has to hold. If we break this area, that means that breadth is continuing to get narrower and um, that would be a, a much more of a concern. So would love to see this kind of bounce up and for the equal weight to, at the very least, start to, to challenge these all-time highs, right? I mean, it's still an uptrend, even though we're starting to see the earliest signs of it turning over. Um, so not crazy concerned at this point, but it is something I'm keeping my eye on. Again, I love that we're at all time highs, but again, this is, um, you know, we, we are seeing a divergence. All right, well, let's keep going. Hughes just rip higher and, um, you know, maybe starting to get a little bit extended right now from the, uh, from the 65 day EMA, we're about 10%. And you see other times that we've been here, it's been, you know, roughly, 10% there, and we had a little pullback. Let's see what it is over here. Uh, right here, we, you know, roughly 10% and pulled back just a little bit right to this trend line. So don't be surprised if next week, if we see some type of pullback to this trend line. Um, right now, this trend line has been tested numerous times and has shown to be holding very well. So, uh, so, as long as it doesn't break, I think we're in good shape on the cues. IWM continues to be the laggard. Um, we got back up to the area of potential resistance and guess what? It ended up being resistance. We are rolling over and you see the nine day rolling over, the 23 day starting to flatten out. Um, longer term, yes, it's still an uptrend, so I'm not like, too, too worried. We'd love to see this break out because then the SPX would also um, probably, uh, the breath would be improving overall. But right now it did act as resistance. So IWM still looking pretty, pretty rough. All right, so let's look at the XLF. XLF, you know, so it, it, it failed to make a higher high here. Didn't make a lower low, but it's not making a higher high. So maybe it's just consolidating sideways at this point. It's still above all these volume weighted average price from the high, from the low, from 2008. So all those are still holding. I mean, a break below these and things could get a lot more, more dicey. Um, yeah, let's see if the 65 day, um, Break. This is 65 day right here. If we start crossing down, then this area right here, you know, this 2266, 2250 ish, that would be my concern. But right now, 
I mean, I, I was looking at potential XLF because I thought there could be rotation into there. You know, I looked at the ratio chart and I see this beautiful, on the ratio chart, a beautiful falling wedge pattern here. Um, but it wasn't ready, right? One, two, three, you know, it may need to pop here, may pop here, then it needs to kind of rotate back up if it's even going to be ready. So um, I do not hold any financial positions at this point in the financial sector uh, because again, it, it failed. So I took my, my little loss and I moved on. But again, this is something that I'm watching on a relative basis. Um, would we'll love to see XLF break out here and then maybe we'll go through a period of outperformance, right? Doesn't mean it's gonna be, you know, rip roaring, but it could mean, but for a period of time, maybe even a short period of time, it does outperform the market. All right, let's look at SMH. SMH, so here's SMH, and this trend line was probably drawn more for um, the line chart than, than this chart, but as you can see, we're kind of, yeah, something like that makes sense to me. So we're kind of right there. Maybe it's starting to, you know, it's just moving sideways, consolidate its gains. Um, you know, this 167-ish, I think that's an important important area for it to, um, to hold. Um, slightly above the nine day, definitely above the 23 day, 65 day is moving straight up higher. So any correction, any pullback, which may be in the cards, I think is a buyable dip as long as we have, um, as long as this uptrend is intact, and then we could probably draw, you know, there's another line here. We could probably draw, you know, something like, like that, you know, from this, this bigger one, big bottom right here. So again, this area is kind of important. I think, you know, the, the 167, 168, would be um would be the area that I'm watching, and SMH could roll over, and then the 65 day and maybe even a retest of the original breakout to all time highs, that could be in the cards. Would it be completely bearish? Not really, as long as this area holds. Now, if we break below 150 ish, that's a different story, right? Now we're in a downtrend, but at this point, I think that um that don't be shocked if we do see a little break here or we see a pull in over the next week or two. And we'll go into more of that. Again, we've seen a deterioration in breath um, and then we're gonna look at sentiment with the put call ratio in just a few minutes. All right, so uh, looking at lumber, lumber is just rip roaring. I mean, coming up to the area of potential resistance right here, you know, uh, we'll see what happens when it gets to the 67-ish area. Does it rip ahead of it and go to, you know, all-time highs? We'll see. You know, does it, does it need to pull back a little bit and kind of just finish out this base? Maybe that's what it needs to do. I mean, kind of uh, and create some kind of inverse head and shoulders. So we'll take a look at that. But again, there is nothing bearish about lumber uh, going forward. And again, XHB is one of the best performing sectors uh, right now. That just, you know zoom into all-time highs right so lumber is looking good let's look at spx versus tlt and let's just get rid of some of this spx tlt so we are seeing a little bit of rollover at this point nothing crazy bearish you know just kind of hit the spot it may just need to move sideways you know again maybe a little pullback or in the cards for the next week or two I think any dip right now is, is, is probably a viable dip as long as we don't have any kind of weird, you know, strong violation of, of these moving averages. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but this is just a, you know, just a little pullback. I don't think there's anything crazy going on there. Looking at TLT, um, and you see, you know, kind of pulled back here and it kind of performed well this week. Um, nothing, you know, We'll see what happens here. You know, if TLT breaks out above 172, that's going to be a different story for the market, right? We're, we'll be in a different environment at that point. Um, but we're not there yet, and and we may never get there, right? You know, the 10 year, the 10 year is you know ripped up, pulled back. We'll see if you know 0.59 holds its support. 
and it starts to move higher or at least just kind of settles down and moves sideways. I mean, that'd probably be the best um, scenario, just sideways move, movement. We don't get, you know, too much up or down here. Just given rates nice and low, high yield bonds, you know, just sideways movement off the bottom. We'd love to see it come up here and challenge these, these prior, you know, um, highs right here. You know, 52 week highs or multi-year highs. This would be the area that I hope it kind of gets to. If high yield is performing well, I think that the market overall would be performing well. And looking at credit spreads, IEI, G. You know, we so you know we saw this big spike up back in March, and then we've seen lower highs and lower lows ever since. Didn't quite make a lower low, but we got pretty darn close to it. Um, so now we're watching to see, make sure we don't, you know, take out any of these highs up here, right? A quick spike in credit, that would be a warning sign that, that things are maybe getting a little bit worse out there. As of right now though, I think that credit continues to move uh, in a tightening manner, and that would be still a bullish outlook for the stock market. Looking at VIX, VIX has come in from the highs, um, and it still is making lower highs and lower lows. So that's a beautiful thing, and that just means that we're in more of a less volatile, more trending market, and um, it's a market I would like to be in. I don't like volatility. I like beautiful trending markets. Um, that's when I tend to do the best. So, um, so this looks really good with the VIX just coming in like that. So we talked about, I mentioned sentiment, and I like to use put call ratio as my, um, as my sentiment indicator. And this is equity only, because I don't want people that are using, um, hedging their portfolios against the larger indexes. So this is equity only put call ratio. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put the moving averages in here. And something that I noticed is these moving averages, they've all, I mean, it's been in this frothy area for so long, the moving averages now have now come into the frothy area. So um, wouldn't be shocked if we see some sort of pullback over the next week or two. Yeah, you know, we've been in this area for, for a few months now, and eventually there's gonna be some kind of um, shakeout that the market's gonna have to go through. It always does, right? We've always seen shakeouts happen, you know, historically once we get into this more frothy area. So um, this is my, another indicator saying, be careful for a volatile week coming up, especially with um, the breath. And again, we'll look at the value line geometric index here, and you can see breath deteriorated just a little bit this, um, this past week. So with breath deteriorating, things in a, in a very bullish manner, you know, I think that there is a good chance that we get a shakeout or a sharp move lower or, or some, like maybe even a couple of nasty days coming up. But the good news is, is that we're in a solid uptrend, right? Really cues. Yeah, I mean, we're in a solid uptrend. So at this point, I think any dip is a is a viable dip in the market unless we get some kind of weird, you know, big vertical violations, you know, with a, something that looks like this. That would obviously change my outlook completely. If we start seeing credit spreads tightening up, if we start seeing, um, uh, if we start seeing the VIX spike, right? Uh, I think those will all be signs of a change of character of the market. But as of right now, we are not seeing any of that. And again, I think the dips will be viable unless we start to see those um, other events start to manifest itself. Hope you all have a good week. Um, oh yeah, also, if you follow my other video, uh, my, which is my 12 week experiment of buy and hold, uh, week 12 is now finished. I will be doing my final video in that series. Um, found some really interesting stuff going on there. I kind of parsed out some numbers. So, um, so and actually it will, I believe, change the way that I, I trade, um, at least manage my risk a little bit. So check out that. I will be posting that video in just a little bit. And I uh, hope you all have a good week this week. Take care. Stay safe out there.